Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at this hairy lion uploaded by Primos. First things first, we go down to developer notes, see if they have any specifications, and they say yes to rafts, no supports, a resolution which is the layer height of 0.2 millimeters and an infill of 15%. Now before you even print the model, you are going to need a few things. That's going to be either a sharp pair of scissors or a knife, as well as a hair dryer. So make sure you have those before you print the model. Once you're ready, you're going to go up here to the download all files and you should get a folder similar to this with a bunch of STLs. The only difference between all these STLs is the size of the actual model and if they have a brim or not. So you have the hairy lion, the regular, you have a big and you also have a small version. So whatever size you want, you can print. If you want to know the exact size, just upload it to Cura or your slicing software and the very bottom corner, you should see the exact height. So whatever size you want, click on that. And then he also makes a option where you can add a brim to the model, a uh, pre-made brim. So if you have any questionable adhesion, just print the one with a brim. If you don't, then no need. Um, the brim won't take up too much material and it won't add too much print time. So even if you're not too sure if you should add a brim or not, just add the brim just to be safe. For me, I don't need it and I just want a small version. So I'm gonna print the hairy line small. So click and hold on the one you want and drag it to your preferred slicer of choice and give it a few seconds to load in. Once the model is loaded in, you should see a cylinder and no line to be found, but the line is there and it's inside of that uh, cylinder just hidden with all these lines. So let's take this step by step and first we're gonna select a profile, which is the layer height. Click on here and select the layer height of 0.2, which is what the developer recommended. And if this page pops up, just click on the discard button to erase all previous profile modifications. Next, we're going to go to this infill tab and we're going to change the infill density to 15%. So whatever number's there, just change it down to 15%. And infill density is basically how much material is inside of the model. So make sure that's 15. Next, we're going to go to supports. Developer said no supports are necessary, so we're going to make sure this is unchecked. For the build pit adhesion, the developer said yes to rafts, but that just means print the one with a brim already. You can add a brim if you want, just by clicking here and selecting brim. But if you are going to add a brim, just print the one with the brim itself. If you have, if you selected the STL with a brim, you do not have to, you do not have to add anything else here. Leave it as skirt. So uh, that's it. Other than that, you know, all you have to do is click on the slice button, and you're set to go. Once the software has finished slicing, you should be given a time estimate of roughly 2 hours and 47 minutes, but that will depend on the printer you use, as well as the STL you selected, as well as a estimated filament usage of only 21 grams. So you always preview the print by clicking the preview button, and take a look around the model, see if everything looks nice and normal, and everything does, so the next step is going to be to save the file and send it over to your printer. In order to process the line, you're going to have to remove this cylinder enclosing. In order to do that, you will need either a very sharp knife or a very sharp blade. I recommend you use some sort of eye protection equipment as PLA is pretty brittle and pieces can go flying around while you're trying to remove the cylinder. To remove the cylinder, simply cut along the edges of the cylinder to disconnect the hairs from the actual wall. And take your time, go nice and slow, and do part by part in order to get this fully removed. As you can see in the video, this definitely will take you some time and it might give you a little bit of trouble, but take your time and go nice and slow. Once the cylinder has been removed, it is now time for you to use the hair dryer. When using the hair dryer, I recommend you stay at a medium to high temperature, but not max, because if you have it at max, 
the hairs will simply curl on their own. For me it was pretty tricky doing this with one hand but do take your time and you can always restart or remove the hairs around once they have cooled down. So if you don't like how it looks like the first time you pass it with a hairdryer, simply turn on the hairdryer again and recurl to your preferred position. I can guarantee you that your line will not look perfect the first time. For me it took about 5 minutes to get it to not look completely hideous. So remember to take your time, you can always move the hair back and forth. Just keep reapplying the heat and moving the hair to your preferred position. You'll get that perfect line eventually. This is the model once processing has been completed. No two lines are going to look the exact same, so don't worry if yours looks a little different from mine. I really like how the developer made a model which allowed the user to customize it even further. So definitely kudos to the developer for that. In the end, the model came out perfect and has no defects. I definitely recommend it for anybody who wants to print a model that's hands-on.